I believe that every movie adheres to the 29 point story structure. No matter if the writer outlines first or if they dive in blind, the end product follows the same 29 beats. Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl is my 39th piece of evidence. This paint by numbers studio gamble caught lightning in a bottle where every creative personality involved exceeded every expectation. They created an iconic piece of cinema in a time when swashbuckling was cringy and predictable and lame. No one but no one saw Captain Jack Sparrow on the horizon. Gore Verbinski's visual flair carried jokes and plot references through transitions, creating cohesion where otherwise there could have been chaos. An army of supporting actors vied for camera time against powerhouses Kira Knightley, Johnny Depp, and Orlando Bloom, everyone in command of their performances. And of course, everything was stitched together in perfect harmony by the 29-point story structure. Let's begin. A tight focus on the core elements of the protagonist's personality, inner conflict, and situation. We meet Elizabeth and her bad boy Kink juxtaposed to her highborn upbringing and marriage prospects, then speed right past her bad boy and his nervously thirsty disposition to experience one of the greatest entrances of any character in cinema history, Jack Sparrow. Where, why, and how the protagonists exist in their world, with a focus on why they don't quite fit in. Jack charms and confuddles his way to the acquisition of a new ship, while Elizabeth suffers her station in society, suffocating from the finest money can buy, and her future of privilege is oblivious to her turmoil. A singular event that's never happened before, and is destined to lead the characters away from their status quo. The cursed coin finally touches water again, and the seas react. An examination of what's different in light of the something new, what's the same in spite of it in relation to the status quo. We're treated to a second introduction to Captain Jack Sparrow and where he stands in conjunction to high society. The discovery that things are less than ideal, or an exploration of how badly things are. Jack kind of recognizes Will, but can't quite place the face, yet accurately calls out the romantic angst in his, um, swordplay, then hints to the revenge mission he's embarking upon. Characters dedicate their effort to a specified goal, which is smaller in scope than the primary objective of the third act. Elizabeth struggles with both halves of herself, the highborn and the kink, while Will gets his chance to put down a few pirates and the crew of the damned hunt the cursed gold medallion. A brief checklist of the story elements needed for the second act. The rules, guidelines, and expectations of every lifestyle, swashbuckling action and clever one-liners, Jack's wildly fluctuating fortunes, and the tenuous relationships Jack has with pretty much everyone. The singular event that launches the characters into the wild jungle of the second act, also called an oh shit moment. The crew of the damned are undead, with moonlight showing their true forms. Oh shit. Characters must learn all new rules and expectations distinct to this adventure. Elizabeth stands upon the dreaded Black Pearl, confident in the respectable word of pirates, and negotiates under an assumed name which gets her in even worse trouble. Then Will's plan to use Jack as a compass goes dismissed and he's left helpless. Characters showcase their ability to grow in the areas this adventure requires, typically through external means. Will negotiates a deal with a pirate under his real name and secures a lead to Elizabeth. Then he and Jack pull some clever shenanigans to commandeer a fast ship. Characters face legitimate and understandable reasons to deviate from their stated convictions, agendas, or desires. Will is rattled to discover that he's the son of a well-known pirate, and faces the prospect of falling in under a pirate's command to save Elizabeth, while Jack receives a hostile welcome in Tortuga. An escalation of problems that vex the characters. Jack finds a reluctant first mate until he reveals the parentage of Will, while Elizabeth is told the curse and its origin, then discovers the depths of the nightmare she lied her way into. Characters evolve internally by utilizing everything they've gathered and learned. Jack assembles his new and uncursed crew, then races to catch up with the Black Pearl, while Barboza leads the crew of the damned to the cursed treasure. 
journey-weary characters reconcile the reality of their ongoing situation with who they were in the first act. Mr. Gibbs explains the tale of mutiny that led Jack to his opening scene introduction. Then Jack teases out a translation of Will already being a pirate in relation to his first act love interest. Then Barboza's benediction recounts the cursed events that led them to Port Royal. A singular event that strikes to the protagonist core conflict. The curse fails to lift without the true blood of Bootstrap Bill, no matter how fiercely Elizabeth wants to be a turner. And there's no turning back from here. Characters find needed answers for both external and internal conflicts. Will rescues Elizabeth and convinces Mr. Gibbs to leave Jack behind. And Jack cuts a deal to lead the crew of the damned one step closer to lifting the curse. The clarified objective is realized in part or in whole, though it's meaningless without the completion of the primary objective. Will and Elizabeth finally spend a tender moment together, but it results in Will facing the truth of his father. Then Jack negotiates the return of the ship to his command in exchange for lifting the curse, but he's not really in any position to enforce any result. An existential conflict that wounds the character's sense of self worldly identity or their journey. The Black Pearl catches up with the Interceptor, forcing Anna Maria to get creative. But still, the Black Pearl gains, and they face a conflict with an undead foe. And they cobble together as many five-head blades as possible to catch them off guard. An undeniable win for the protagonist, typically in direct connection to the Rebirth. The Interceptor causes damage to the infamously diabolical and merciless Black Pearl, and we get an epic pirate ship battle sequence that soon frees Jack from his cell down below. A grand loss directly connected to the character's newfound inability to quit the journey. One good shot knocks out the Interceptor's main sails and pins Will below deck with water rushing in. Then the cursed coin finds its way back into Barboza's possession. A thematic freefall tied directly to the heavy price the Interceptor's crew become helpless captives after their loss. Will negotiates with the undead pirates by revealing his parentage, and true to pirate form, the dead weight of Will's foolish deal is forced to walk the plank. A singular event that robs the protagonist of seemingly any chance of success. Jack and Elizabeth are marooned on an island with only one mercy bullet between them, separated from Will and left for dead. Characters cannot return to their starting personas, and must turn to face the primary objective. The truth of the legendary Captain Jack Sparrow is revealed, and Elizabeth's escape ploy lands her into the matrimonial arms of Norrington in a desperate move to rescue Will. Then Will reckons with the truth of his father, the righteous-minded pirate, in the very hall of the ship he once served. Characters move towards the climax while utilizing the major swings and sneaky misdirections of the story. We return to Isla de Muerta, to the location of Cortez's treasure, and Jack navigates a wheelhouse of egos and agendas to place himself next to the chest. Then the undead pirates do what undead pirates do in a fashion we haven't yet seen, while Elizabeth of this time sneaks off to save Will of this time. The final confrontation between the protagonist and the antagonistic force. Jack battles his mutinous first mate, revealing his secret plan to make it to the ending. Elizabeth unites with Will to take out the straggler zombie pirates, and everyone sweeps into position to lift the curse at the opportune moment. The singular event where the protagonist finally confronts their place in the status quo. Will adds his pirate blood to the coin, and the crew of the damned is granted their humanity. The direct aftermath of the climax. Barboza falls, finally a mortal and the crew of the damned regain their sense of fear and self-preservation in the moonlight. Will and Elizabeth do a bit of the old Ross and Rachel bit, and Jack squares with the betrayal of his uncursed crew as the Black Pearl slips through his fingers. Again. The consequences of the climax in relation to other characters and the status quo. High society condemns Jack despite his noble victory, and Will peels himself even further from it by aligning himself as a chaotic good musketeer then Elizabeth forces high society to stand down its hostilities. A tight focus on the protagonist contrasted from the opening. Will and Elizabeth profess their endearing love, and Jack wins his black pearl.
And there you have it. My 39th example to support my argument that all movies follow the exact same story structure, regardless of how the writer approaches their craft. The Curse of the Black Pearl played like a storytelling fill-in-the-blank worksheet, all the while striking solidly upon every step of the 29-point story structure. But does this big-budget pirate adventure follow the same plot beats as the true-to-life racial tensions in and around the Illinois chapter of the Black Panther Party in the 1960s? Yes. Yes, it arguably does. Next on my docket, Judas and the Black Messiah. Please subscribe to stay up to date with this and future videos, and please like and comment with your thoughts and reactions. I'll talk to you next time.